In this video, I will show you how to configure the pins on your BeagleBone Black as GPIO pins so that you can use them as input. And for this video, I'll be using the button on this board and I'll leave a link on the description below of where you can buy it. Also, just for reference, I'm using Debian 8.6. However, this the steps to configure the pins as GPIO pins will also work for Debian 7.11. The pin that my button is connected to on my board is uh, pin 29 on header P9, which here you can see that it is GPIO 115, 115. So this is the pin that I'll be configuring. So right now I'm SSH'd into my BeagleBone Black. So first thing we want to do is check which uh, device tree overlays are exported. And, do, and you do that by outputting the contents of the slots file. So cat, and type in the address of your slots file. Uh, for me, I previously set my variable slots equal to my to the path of my slots file. So just for reference, this is it. And uh, for Debian 7.11, the path is different. Also, you can see that I don't have any device tree overlays exported. So if you do, uh, go ahead and unexport them. And if you're not sure how to do that, go ahead and check out my previous video on how to export and unexport device tree overlays. And the reason why you might want to unexport a device tree overlay is because uh, the device tree overlay currently exported might be using the pins that you want to configure. For example, the universal and device tree overlay uses all of the GPIO pins that we saw uh, here on this figure. So if you have that exported, we won't be able to control the button on this board. Now, once you unexported all of your device tree overlays, cd into the following directory sys class gpio enter uh, let's go ahead and print out the contents of this file of this folder and here you can see that you have two files the export and unexport files and these are the files that you want to write to to export and unexport one of the 65 possible pins that we saw in the previous figure now i mentioned that my button is connected to pin 25 on header p9 which maps to um i actually pin 27 on header p9 which maps to 115 so that's the pin that i'll be exporting 115 and to write to the export files you use the echo command so we use echo 115 then the direct output symbol followed by the name of the file export hit enter tap out the let's print out the contents of this folder again and here you can see that the that we have a new uh, new folder gpio 115 so we cd into that folder and the dot slash is means current directory so gpio 115 enter and now let's print out the contents of this file you can see that you have uh, a combination of files and folders. Files we'll be working with on this video are the value file and the direction file. The direction file is a file that uh, you write to to configure your pin as an input or an output, and the value file is a is a the file that you write to to configure your pin as a higher low. So if we print out the contents of the direction file, we can see that currently our pin is configured as an input. And if we print out the contents of the value file, we see that our pin is currently a low. So because we're working with a button, we want the direction to be in an input. But if it was an output, the way you would change it would be by writing to a direction uh, file using the echo command again. And let's say we want to make it an output, we will write out, then the redirect output symbol, then followed by the name of the file, direction, hit enter. And if we print out the direction again, we can see that we changed it to an output. So now let's change it back to an input. And we do that by writing the uh, word in to the direction. So again, let's print out the contents of the direction just to make sure that it is an input. And it currently is. Now back to the value file. Because the button is currently not pressed, we can see that it is a zero. Now, if we press and hold the button and print out the contents of the value file again, we can see that the value will change to a 1 because the button is pressed. So hit enter. Now if we let go and print the contents of the value file again, hit enter, you can see that it is a 0. Now another command that you can use to monitor the contents of the value file so that you don't have to type with one hand and hold the button with the other hand to see the contents of the value file change is to use the watch command. So watch, then type in help. So the option we want to use is 
dash n followed by the number of seconds we want to wait so if we execute the command watch and followed by a number of seconds let's say one then uh, we type in the command cat dot slash value what this is saying is execute this command every one second so if we press enter you can see that this command cat dot slash value is being executed every one second so if we press and hold you can see it change and every second it will update so if we let go you can see it go back to zero again press goes back to one let go goes back to zero and that's how you would monitor the console of the value file to see that the button is, is changing between a high and low state now let's go ahead and export this uh, GPIO pin that we configured to exit out of this watch command that you executed you just hit control C uh, let's go ahead and clear the screen let's CD back into uh, the parent directory so our GPIO directory let's go ahead and print out the contents of this file again of this folder and so we want to unexport this GPIO pin that we configured so to do that we go ahead and write the GPIO pin number so 115 to the file on export using the echo command again so echo 115 redirect output symbol then the name of the file on export hit enter again if we print out the contents of this folder we see that the GPIO pin 115 is now uh, unexported in my next video I will show you how to do this same configuration and how to work with uh, input pins but on C++ thank you for watching